Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion with Greg Stilson from APH. My name is Will Butler. Uh, you, all, you all know me from SciTech Global, but uh, Greg, thank you so much for talking to me today uh, about uh, this exciting new product to come out of APH. Oh, thanks, me. Thanks for having me on SciTech, uh, Will. This is great. To, to clarify, this is a um, R&D project, but do, when are we going to actually see this, this thing um, come out, Greg? You know, our, our, our timeline is going to be hopefully the end of 2023. Um, we'd like to make sure that we have field testing in process uh, well into 2023. So, um, you know, we're looking at still a couple of years out, but we want to start getting the word out now um, just because of the, the gravity of what we're trying to do. It is exciting. And um, we'll get a little uh, peek at it at the end of our session today. So stay tuned, folks, to see uh, how this tactile display actually works. But before we before we dive into that, Greg, help me sort of define the dream here a little bit. Um, wh why tactile graphics? Um, maybe you know, a as a kid, you know, coming into a, a learning setting, what is that experience like for a kid trying to get access to uh, a math textbook or or another type of uh, learning material? Uh, so it's a good it's a good question and. Honestly, it really depends on the situation that the school is in, um, whether that textbook's been uh, created in the past. Um, so one example I'll give is, is uh, an Algebra 2 textbook, for, for example. We, um, we, we produced an Algebra 2 textbook this year, um, and a, a textbook, to, to kind of put it in perspective, can take you know, up to 30 to 40 volumes of Braille um, and and tactile graphics all combined into these you know bound massive books um, and can take over a year to produce and part of that is because you're you're engaging a lot of people with a lot of expertise from tactile graphics artists to braille transcriptionists um, and as a, as a student if that book has not been produced and let's just say that the the book order hasn't come in you know that far in advance to when you need it um, I, I specifically remember an instance in college when I needed a, a, a calculus book and it didn't actually arrive until I was three weeks from the end of the semester. So, um, you know, making sure that you receive that content timely is, is really a challenge at times. I definitely remember all the energy and effort it took to get my books converted into alternate formats. and. Um, so it can make a huge difference if this could just happen automatically, right? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about impromptu learning too, because I think um, it's it's one thing to have a textbook translated, but in a school setting or just in a work setting or wherever you are, uh, things are being thrown at you all the time: a handout, a printout, a, an image up on a screen. Uh, how, how do uh, TVIs and, and other uh, people in the community currently? deal with impromptu learning yeah and this is where i truly admire the creativity of the tvis and the the paraprofessionals and things like that and, and the people like that in our field um, because you are no pun intended blindsided with a lot of different content that teachers professors just forget to to provide um, the student or the, the the teacher in advance um, and so they're doing these amazingly creative acrobatics to produce tactile graphics from things like you know common things that, that we provide at APH and and we have a, a ton of different sort of impromptu learning tools that can prov you know create things like shapes or uh, or geometric concepts or things like that um, all the way to you know things like wiki sticks or um, you know these these uh, ro rolling wheels that basically create a, a tactile graphic on a, on a braille paper so I know they're they're using household items or or anything like that just to produce, you know, very vague images so that the student has an understanding of what what the the teacher or the the class is looking at. I remember when I first learned about the thermoform paper that allows you to kind of sketch something out and then basically bake it right and you and got it turn yep. it into a tactile image. <laughs> People are using really really creative ways. To kind of roughly, um, you know, roughly guess at what a t what an image should look like, right? Right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So enter APH. Uh, you lead innovation at APH. It's the 21st century. Uh, what What is the solution? What's the dream solution for tactile? 
graphics and and learning combined. Uh, so in 2020, we put out a request for information RFI to basically say, look, our, our dream here is to create a, a, a tactile device that is capable of producing both tactile graphics and, you know, uh, standard Braille in the same uh, tactile array. And it, it's it's been something that that has been tried by a number of organizations, academic, um, you know, projects and things like that. Um, but nothing's really come to fruition and come to prime time. And and one of the things here at APH is we also, um, you know, we are one of the largest textbooks producers of of textbooks here in the United States. Um, and so, you know, our vision has always been to produce textbooks on a device like this, right? To basically create essentially like a, a, a tactile Kindle so that students will be able to receive a textbook, gain access to it, and then basically read it as if they're reading a paper textbook, right? Having access to all the, the Braille questions, the, the, the literary content, but then also if there's a tactile graphic, being able to, to, to click into that and view that in its detail as, as much as possible as well. So we, um, we, we put out this request for information and we, we got a lot of responses and a lot of varying technologies, right? So, you know, there's no two technologies were alike. Um, and we, we, you know, also in addition to looking at technology, wanted to look at the, the business as well. And, and APH really does a lot of our projects um, with partners today, right? So we recognize our strength is in knowing the field of education of students with visual impairments and our research. Um, and, and most importantly, I think the, the design of our user experience, right? Um, but we wanted an equal partner in this because we knew that this project wasn't just going to be challenging from a technology perspective. It's also going to be tremendously expensive. And we wanted a, a, a partner who was willing to, to share in, uh, in this project both financially and with the, the collective brain power as well. So um, APH and the company Humanware um, partnered together to to basically be equal partners in this project to to try to bring this dream of this concept of what we're calling sort of the holy braille um, into a reality <laughs> i love that in a true sort of like innovator format you're trying to trying to put yourself out of business in order to stay in business right, right. <laughs> you got it man like we it's almost like you, you just got to kind of like shoot yourself into the 20 to 21st century and say all right we gotta we're we gotta move and and rip off the band-aid quick right right okay so what what have you learned um from past iterations of attempts at this this hybrid device and 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 what are the goals what what do you want to be able to accomplish with this um with this with this dynamic uh this dynamic tactile device so we we saw um you know we've 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 been involved in a a, a number of uh, tactile projects um we we worked with uh the past graffiti project um which was a research project that we undertook back in starting in i think 2015 something like that and we learned a lot. Um, we learned that the market needed more than just a tactile display for graphics. Um, and, and Braille has significant value when, uh, when, when, when people put their hands on a device like this. Don't get me wrong, there is value, a ton of value in, in a graphical display. But um, access to, to standard Braille, um, the, the, the possibilities really multiplied when you, when you put forth that possibility. Um, and, and as past iterations were able to create things like Jumbo Braille, um, it didn't create that sort of transferable skill to, to reading standard text or standard, standard Braille. And, so, and you can do so much more with graphics when you're able to add labels, right? Uh, one thing I can tell you as a blind person myself is it's very challenging to look at a graphic and understand what it is. And so having Braille labels or potentially audio labels can really help guide the user in, in grasping the content that they're looking at. So you've got, you've got this unnamed a uh, dynamic tactile device that you guys made you've got it in your hands what is it what does it feel like what does it look like um we're going to look at it in just a few minutes but what, what to describe it to me 
Yeah, so, and, and like I said, what, what, what I'm going to show today is, is really the underlying technology, right? This is not the product that we will be releasing. This is not even something that looks like the product, what we're going to be releasing. But what I have here is a, it's a pad, um, basically a, of 10 braille lines uh, that is capable of showcasing what the technology feels like when you touch it, what it looks like when you create graphics. And, you know, being in the, the virtual world that we are, we're going to do the best that we can with uh, the, <laughs> the camera technology that I've got. So I'm going to already apologize for the sort of fuzzy uh, graphics that you are going to see. But um, all in all, what I want to get across is that the Braille that, that you touch feels like, um, you know, a standard refreshable Braille display that you'd feel today. The difference is that these pins do not go down. So as you touch them, they, um, they, they, they're locked in place, which is, I think, really good, especially for people who have neuropathy or um, struggle reading. And, and, and quite honestly, I can tell you as a, as a very um, attention <laughs> challenged student myself, when I was in school, I remember with refreshable Braille display, I would push those piezoelectric cells up and down and up and down in the classroom is sort of a fidget type of thing. <laughs> yeah. These these can't do that, right? You you're once the pin is up, it's up. And so um, what what you'll feel is lines of braille that that feel like a traditional refreshable braille display line of braille, but then you'll also feel um, tactile graphics, right? These pins are are designed to produce um, evenly spaced tactile graphics as well. What, oh, and and these are these little equidistant dots are these different than the, the the standard dots people are used to feeling what makes these dots unique yeah i can't really speak to the underlying technology but they are not the same as piezoelectric it's uh but but the the, the part that we really focused on with this technology is refining the way the pin feels to the fingertip and what what i can tell you is that it feels very similar to a refreshable braille display pin that you're used to right one of the challenges that we looked at when we're when we're working on this project, right, is we're changing the way that people access refreshable Braille um, to a point where it's never really been done before. And one of the things that we we looked at was we're like we can't change the way that the pin actually feels to somebody, right? We can't change the way Braille feels. That's just too much to to change. It's too much to accept, right? So mm -hmm. we're like, okay, well, it the way I look at it is like if you took the the way a print font looks if you took away the way a, a specific print font looks to a sighted person the adoption rate would be far lower right so um, right. we wanted to make sure that the we really refined the pin and the way the pin feels so that people are comfortable as soon as they lay their fingers on it it's like if you open up your operating system one day and it was all comic sans <laughs> exactly. right you, you would feel differently about using the device <laughs> exactly. tell me about tell me about a. uh, uh the software though is it just going to run your software or is there a vision for others to be able to develop with this device it's a great it's a great question so yeah um we we recognize you know it, we we talked about sort of the, the 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 primary goals of this number one being textbooks right being able to to gain access to textbooks number two is to be able to to gain access to impromptu learning things so being able to take graphics that exist in the world today and whether they're on a computer or a smartphone or something, being able to essentially use this as a tactile monitor, right? So being able to, to send that to, to the tactile display. Um, and, and, you know, in this case, uh, yes, number three is be able to develop a, an ecosystem where um, developers and partners of APH are able to, to create apps. So our goal is to create a an API um, so that that these apps can be created by by third party developers or potentially academics who who want to create um, experiences that we can't even dream of right now. Right. Like our goal is just let's let's figure out how to, to create multi line Braille displays and have graphics displayed. Right. I'd, there's a lot smarter people out there than I am to to create these amazing experiences. And, you know, as as a uh, former low vision kid who's really lost my my vision over time. Right. I was a big big fan of video games right like i've got these dreams of like tactile games for these kids to be able to play wow. um so so who knows what you know the sky's the limit i think we we need to build that foundation but like i said i think with uh, opening it up to potentially third-party developers that that are sort of partners of aph I'm, I'm beyond excited to see what what gets created 
you started working on this just a little over a year ago in the midst of a global pandemic. And I'm wondering how on earth did you do, do user research and testing um, for this? Because it, for a physical device, I imagine many others who are watching have also confronted the same, these same issues over the past year. <laughs> it was it was not, I would say, an optimal climate for for user <laughs> research. Um, we we did some really creative things, and I am so proud of the team um, for really not getting discouraged because it would have been so easy to just be like, no, we've got a few blind people in house here at APH. We know the field pretty well. We can we can make assumptions and and that'll be enough and it mm. that's that's a hundred percent the wrong answer. Sounds um, dangerous. It really does and it really is right. So, what we did is we reached out to um, to schools for the blind to teachers that we we know um, in the field and really asked them to get their students together and and you know some schools were seeing or some teachers were seeing students in person some teachers were doing everything virtually. Um, so trying to figure out where we could actually get fingertips on on graphics and things like that. But quite honestly, the level of creativity that we got to, we the number one thing that we were looking at is what is the optimal size of the tactile space, right? How many Braille characters is right? How many, you know, what, what what's the right aspect ratio to do this? And so because without that knowledge, like the rest of the device doesn't come to fruition because that's the part that's going to take the largest chunk of the device, right? So, you know, that was our first focus is like, what is the right, what is the right size of the tactile array? Because you get, what we learned is if you get too, you know, too narrow, then the graphic looks distorted. If you get too long and not tall, but wide, um, then, then it, it looks different the other way. So, and then you, you you chime in with making sure that you're providing enough Braille that brings value if somebody's just reading a multi-line uh, textbook, for example, and no graphics. So there's a lot of variables here. So what we ended up doing was we sent out literally envelopes of pieces of paper that we emboss tactile graphics and, uh, and Braille, different Braille examples. Um, and, and surveyed uh, a number of teachers and students who were either with or virtually with their students um, and then collected feedback and um, we were we were very happy with the results that we got um, and most importantly very happy with the patience that these <laughs> these yeah. wonderful people had um, but but you know with something like this because this is such an exciting project I was I was you know really enthusiastic to see um, just the excitement that people had with this and they wanted to participate. They wanted to provide their feedback. And, and yeah. I think it was also a breath of f fresh air amongst the whole COVID <laughs> pandemic quietness that was happening. Well, and that's why I think speaks to the importance of why someone like APH could be an important part of making this because you have the ability to go analog like that and, and use creative solutions. But, it, you know, it can be done. And I think user research is still um, very much an important an important piece of this. Uh, I want to know though, like wh wh what's the business model here? So who will be buying this device? I presume it's not uh, cheap, but, but what's uh, where, how are people going to get their hands on them? So, so the one thing is that um, we are, we are continuing to look, it's not just going to fall on the federal quota system. So here in the United States, schools get designated federal dollars to purchase um, educational materials directly from APH. Yes, some of those dollars will be able to go to purchasing these dynamic tactile devices when ready. But we recognize that you know you, you can't you know blow your entire uh, chunk of money on one device like this. You're 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 then giving up uh, tools that could benefit other students because this this will cost significantly more than other devices from APH, right? So we're looking for complementary funding. Um, we're we're already engaging the federal government um, because this is a new initiative to really modernize our textbook distribution. Um, and, and make no mistake, you know, one of the things I want to be clear about is that this is not going to eliminate the need for, for Braille transcribers. What our goal with this, and, and initially especially, is just to reduce what I'm, uh, it's the metric that I've uh, <laughs> created in my head called the time to fingertips, right? So if we can reduce, um, one example that I, I told you is this, this Algebra 2 book that we produced last year, right? This Algebra 2 book costs 
$30,000, nearly $30,000 to produce and, and took almost 13 months to complete, right? And so um, if we can reduce the time to fingertips for the, the time that the, the order comes in to the time that it gets to the student's fingertips, even even you know semi-significantly it's still a huge value add we're also going to reduce the cost of you know the the binding packaging embossing shipping any of that kind of stuff um we still the the tactile graphics artists and the um the the braille transcribers are absolutely going to be needed because we're a, a device like this is also going to require an entirely new braille format electronic braille format because something like this for textbooks has never been created before and so Braille transcribers are still going to be transcribing books. We're just going to be distributing them electronically. And outside of education, I imagine this would also have a lot of applications for uh, as a work accommodation for various industries, right? You got it. Yeah. And and I can tell you that even just this, the, the little bit we've talked about this so far, um, one one use case that that has really come to light is is for blind software engineers. There's been a, a large uh, excitement about you know blind people seeing the UI that they actually create, touching the UI that they create, um, being able to 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 really hone their skills on UI creation um, that that may not be as accessible as as it possibly could be, and so. You know, there's that. There's also creating tactile maps and, and a number of different things. Like I said, I, I don't even think we've dreamt of, of half the uses that this thing this thing will have. But but yes, in, in the United States, you know, our primary market is going to be the education market. Um, I'd love to see some professionals being able to use this. And then, of course, um, internationally, um, Humanware's got a fantastic international distribution um you know, uh, network. And so we're, we're going to work with them to, to be able to, to help to distribute this internationally as well. So one last question before we get to the demo, the, the device is not done yet. Um, where do you still need help? And, um, is there, you know, we have all these, all these wonderful technologists and, um, developers, you know, and, and folks who work in assistive technology watching, um, where where do you want to take some steps forward in order to get this thing shipped? I, I appreciate the question, and it's it's not even close to done. So, <laughs> so we've got a lot of work to do. I, I really look at three things that we need help with. Number one is user feedback. Um, we're we're going to be looking for um, next year is is kind of going to be you know pandemic pending. Uh, you know, hopefully my my tour of being able to go to various locations and with with uh, prototypes and actually get hands-on feedback, right? We're going to have some some um, experiences that we're going to try to put people through and hopefully get feedback on exactly how how um, our, our UX should be and what what is the right way. Because quite honestly, like I said, that we're going to be creating things that have never been created. So, um, you know, what's in my head is most likely not the right way to, to do it. So mm -hmm. um, we need to get we need to get feedback. Number one. Number two is we um, you know, one of the biggest things that this will be able to do is take a graphic and and uh, basically do that impromptu learning experience, right? Or, or be able to render that on the tactile display. And I'd love for AI to play a huge factor in that. Um, and we don't have that expertise. Um, and I and I am a firm believer that you know there is uh, a lot of work being done in photography with regards to filtering and I identifying scenes and and focus items and things like that. You know, one of the things that we we know is that with a blind person, sometimes less is more with tactile graphics and really f identifying what is what is the intended focus of this this graphic so that that can be highlighted automatically and the rest can kind of be, you know, faded into the background. Um, I think there's a lot of need for this, you know, creating a data model based on tactile graphics that really is focused on on the needs of a blind user and not not such a, a, a focus on a, a sighted you know photographer mm -hmm. or something like that so um so that 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 is really the second the last piece is you know we're going to be creating this new what we're calling the ebrf which is the new um electronic braille ready format um that is really designed for a multi-line experience and um, this is sort of this new Braille electronic format for the 21st century. And a part of what we're going to need to do is create an advocacy group around this so that it gets adopted as an uh, international standard. And so uh, we'll be circulating a white paper on that as well. Can folks reach out? Is there an email address or something? 
Yeah, we're going to uh, DTD, Dynamic Tactile Device, DTD at APH.org is the, the best place to get us. That's pretty easy to remember. Yep. DTD at APH.org. Greg, will you, show, will you show us what you got? Will you pull back the curtain for us? <laughs> Absolutely. I, like I said, well, with the, with the Zoom gods uh, <laughs> you know, at our disposal, we'll see. One of the things that you will see, I'm going to uh, switch over my camera in a second, but due to lighting, um, what, we've, what we're looking at is it may look like a, a bit of a trapezoid when you look at it. Um, it is a square device, just to let you know. It's the way the angle um, is. I've got it angled so that the reflection is, makes it a little bit more visible. Um, but what I'll, what I'll be showing here in a second is some, some graphics and some Braille examples just to show you that you know, what, what, I'm, what I'm showing really works. Um, I'm, I want, we've seen a lot of sort of um, things that have kind of come through and then disappeared. And my, my biggest point that I want to leave you with today is this is real and this is something that does work today. Um, so I'm going to show you a few uh, examples now. Yep, I see some. I'm zooming in here. I see some arrays and an you, array. you got it. As long mm -hmm. as as long as the screen changed away from my head, yep. that's all. Looks I care good. About. That's perfect. So, so Greg, about. walk me through this for those who are listening. What what have we got here? Sure. So what you're seeing is basically a bunch of Braille cells, um, and what I'm going to show now is every, all the pins are down. So what I'm going to show you first is just an example of. Um, a typical bar graph, right? So just this is just going to be an example of a, a standard bar graph, okay? So I'm going to load that up now. It's now loading. It takes about two seconds to load. And now what you visibly should be seeing is a bar graph. On the left side of the bar graph is um, the 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 y-axis. And what I have <laughs> is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12. On the bottom, I have the x-axis, which says cats, pigs, for some reason, somebody put ants and dogs. So you're seeing which is the most popular. And I can tactilely feel with my fingertips that the bar is far higher for dogs. And if I go all the way across, it, it goes to 12. I'm not sure. This is just an example of a, of a graph. Well, it, it, with, my, with what limited sight I have, it, it looks like the graph is just perfectly rendered exactly like it would be in a yeah, it, it's, it, I mean, from a tactile perspective, Will, as I'm touching it, it feels just like a, a typical graph you'd feel in a textbook. It's, it's pretty crisp, yeah. Yep, and like I said, this these pins are the, the height that you would feel uh, on a standard refreshable Braille display. So it's it, it, the learning curve, it's not like you're learning relearning to read Braille. Um, another example I'd like to use here is uh, a, a typical pie graph. So this one, you're going to, and it may be hard to see, but there, there will be sort of a Braille key at the top, followed by two pie charts. So I'm going to load that up. It's now loading up. So a couple seconds later, I've now got two pie charts um, filled in both on the left and the right. And then at the top, you have uh, sort of a key to show it says uh, carbohydrates, proteins and then here on the left I can see that 65% is is uh, proteins and on the right we can see that 50% is proteins I'm not really sure what that all means but just to, to show the capability one of the features that I like to show here though is is our dream is that you'd be able to look at these in a let's just say a zoomed out version like we are today um, so they're zoomed out you see two two pi charts right now but let's say that i want to zoom in on the left one well our dream here is that i'd be able to just double tap on the left pie chart and it will load up zoomed in in a much bigger you know full screen kind of view and actually you know um see that it says protein 65 percent and then it's a much larger version of the the, the pie chart at that wow. point that is so uh, cool you paint a very compelling image of the future greg <laughs> I want to show you that um, my, I think my favorite one to show is a typical math problem. Um, and this is one example that you see in a, just a, a let's just say a geometry uh, book right now. So I'm loading this up. At the top, you see a sort of a word problem written in Braille. And at the bottom, you see uh, a right triangle. Okay. And at the top, it says, number one, determine the measure of uh, B to the nearest tenth of a degree, right? And so here I can feel that uh, the left side says that it's 14 centimeters. I have uh, the right angle here because there's a little box, if you can see that. Um, but then if the user wanted to actually 
uh, zoom in to the triangle, they'd be able to double tap on that triangle and zoom in. And then at this point, the triangle's totally zoomed in and you're seeing it in much more detail, making it larger and, and things like that. So, you know, this is, this is sort of what, what our vision for a textbook looks like, is that, is that you'll be able to read the literary portion of the textbook, but if you need to interact with a tactile graphic, you essentially could double tap on that graphic or graphic symbol and then see it in a full screen graphic viewer at that point. So, like I said, there's so much work to do on this, but this is, this is where I wanted to kind of at least instill confidence that we're dealing with technology, cool. the underlying technology that, that really works. And is the vision that um, TVIs and others would be able to read the device visually alongside a learner? You got it. Yep. So the device will be able to, that's part of our specifications, will be able to cast to a monitor or connect with a, a, an HDMI cable to a, uh, something like that so that the teacher will be able to see, um, you know, in, in print what the student's doing or be able to at least see the visual representation of a Braille display as well. It's incredible. I, you can think of so many applications um, and, and, uh, and, and different uses. A, a software engineer, you know, both being able to check their code and check their interface on the same device, you know? Yeah, exactly. And and the, the last thing I'll leave you with is is kind of a fun one. We always play when I when I demonstrate this, we always play name that um, name that graphic. And this at APH, we have a, a library called the tactile graphics image library, which is a bunch of tactile graphics that, you know, just collected um, that are produced by tactile graphics artists. And the cool thing is that we are already able to, with very little modifications, render almost every graphic in our tactile graphics image library. And this is one that I know the sighted audience will probably recognize instantly. But just to show you the, the, the gravity of what we can do here, this is just a graphic that we pulled off of the tactile graphics Im image library. If I pre if I activate it now, it loads up and will I'm not sure how good your vision is there, but um, <laughs> I'm probably not going to be able to do it. Having said that, our, our sighted audience should be able to recognize that's just that's a bicycle. Um, it just oh. loaded up instantaneously. You've got your two wheels here yeah. and you got your hand, handlebars. That just came off of our tactile graphics and image library just like that. I we, we barely had to do any modifications to make that work. So wow. Um, so we're we're incredibly excited about the, the the underlying technology, and there's just there's so much work to do. So we really appreciate any excitement or um, willingness to to support this project. That's amazing, Greg. What a cool device! And folks, email dtd at aph.org if you uh, if you're as excited about this as I am, and um, and 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 join in the conversation. Yeah, please. Uh, and and if you are interested in this, we are going to be doing a a breakout session following this um, this session here. It'll be myself um, and then Andrew Flatras, the uh, Braille and Tactile Product Manager from from Humanware, kind of teaming up to answer any questions that you may have or um, try to go a little bit deeper if you do have more interest in this. So definitely, please reach out and join that session as well. I'm super excited to talk to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us at SciTech Global, Greg, and uh, love to check in with you next year and see how the progress is going on this. Absolutely. We'll, we're, we're, we'll already schedule it. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Take care.